Welcome to If Not For God, stories of hopelessness that turn to hope. Here is your host, Mike Zwick. Well, how fun is this today? I get to kick off a brand new show here on the Truth Network. And even though he's the star of the show, Mike's Wick, you know, he, he's allowing me to come in and help get this thing kicked off. Welcome, Mike. Thank you very much. It's glad to be here. I'm glad to be here. So this show that we're starting today is the Mike Zwick Show. And so I thought it'd be really fun for the audience to get to know Mike, to know what his passion is, why God's calling him to do this show. If you're like me, you're sitting there wondering, Mike, what does God exactly ask you to do? And 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 what's this show going to be about? But we're not only going to hear Mike's story and and what God's been doing in Mike's life that led up to this new adventure that he has him on, but he's also got his sponsor with him. Yep. And we're excited that Todd Harrison is here mm-hmm. with Todd Harrison Real Estate, and we're going to hear about his story. And we're going to, so we're going to all sorts of things that Jesus is doing today, but let's start off with how did one day, you know, Jesus get a hold of you to the point that you even wanted to do a show? Um, well, uh, several several months back, uh, I have a friend of mine named Tony Jackson, and I knew him from a church called Winston Salem First uh, here in Winston Salem, and we went there. And uh, he had told me that he he had a radio show that he did on uh, the Light, um, which also broadcasts out of the same the same building. And uh, I was talking to him one night, and I was. I don't know if I was preaching to him or whatever, but he kind of stopped me and he says, Mike, Mike, uh, ha- have you ever thought about being on the radio? <laughs> and I said, I don't know. <laughs> he said, well, would you like to come on? And I said, yes, without even thinking about it. And so um, for the past really several months now, I've been coming up on Saturday mornings at 8.30 and uh, I've been a guest on their show and it's just really been a blessing. And uh, I actually met you, Robbie, in the uh, in the hallway one day and uh, when I, I started talking to you, and I, I don't know what it was, but something told me it said, you know, you you can God can help you, and you you can you can have your own show, and 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 you can really bless people and help people, and 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 there's a message out there that uh, maybe is just specific to you, where where you can uh, touch a certain niche of people. So that was it. And speaking of niches, <laughs> you know, you, you told me this story about how God gave you the name of this show. And I, I think it's it's awesome, and it also is connected to <laughs> uh, to Winston Salem first. Yeah, the uh, well, this was actually I was in um, uh, in Hall River, and now we we live in Mebbin, and so there was a uh, church that we go to. It's called the Lamb's Chapel, and the pastor had quoted a uh, quoted a verse, and he said, "And this verse is in Psalm one twenty seven." And so I went to the, read the whole chapter of Psalm 127, and I said, this verse is not in (laughs) Psalm 127, but I actually looked in um, Psalm 127, and it kept saying, if not for God, if not for God, and I said, I, because I had prayed and I asked God what I wanted the name uh, for the show to be, and it, and it came to me, it says, except, except the Lord build the house, they labor in vain that build it. Except the Lord keep the city, the watchman uh, walketh but in vain. It is vain for you to rise up early, to sit up late, to eat the bread of sorrows, for so he giveth his beloved sheep. So it just it's just said, you know, I, and I think about my whole life as well, if if not for God, um, where the heck would I be? Where, where would any of us be? So where where would you be? I mean, <laughs> I mean, I, I love that, you know, and, and, and if you were wondering what the name of the Mike Zwick show is actually going to be, it's going to be If Not For God. If and so, God. And, and what a great lead-in question with almost anybody. Like, If Not For God, what, Mike? Well, uh, If Not For God, I guess the short the short story was I'd, I'd be dead. Um, I, uh, I was, when I was growing up, and I, I went to Calvary Baptist Church and uh, in Winston-Salem, and I believe, Robbie, you went there as well. Still do. I still do with uh, Mark Quartz. And uh, so I, when I was in middle school, I started having problems, and I ended up moving to Durham. And uh, I got really depressed, and I had severe depression. And, and one night I, uh, I said, I'm going to take my whole bottle of Ritalin pills. And I think there were 18 pills in there. And uh, I didn't die. I felt like I was going to die. I didn't die. But after that, I, I went away. They sent me away to something called wilderness camp, or some people know it as survival camp. And I lived in the woods for a year and 20 days. And after that, I started to do better in school and stuff like that. But um, I, I didn't have any real peace, and I didn't really find any real peace 
um, until I met Jesus, and it was right before my uh, senior year, a young lady kept telling me, you need to follow Jesus, you need to follow Jesus. And uh, uh, I remember finally one day she said, Mike, she says, you need to give your life to Jesus. And I said, fine. <laughs> I said, okay. So, <clears throat> and then I, after, after I made the decision, um, I started going to a church called Pinedale Church in uh, Winston-Salem. And uh, I, I guess I kept putting it off, I kept putting it off, and then one day uh, the preacher had said, he said, the, the devil won't tell you not to give your life to Jesus or something like that. He says he'll just tell you to put it off or do it later. And he said that today is the day of salvation. And when he said that, I ran up to the front and I gave my life to Christ and I got baptized. And um, uh, my life hasn't been the same since, and I'm, I'm not saying it's been perfect. <laughs> so, so if we dig into that a little bit, into your story, what were you depressed about? Because, <clears throat> I mean, obviously you took a whole bottle of Ritalin. There was right. something, something that actually was digging in, and I, my guess is, as gifted as you are, and I've been around you long enough to know that you are extremely gifted, Satan didn't exactly want Mike to come alive, so right. he, he'd come after something. Right, right, you're right. Yeah, I mean, the, uh, uh, the thief co- comes to steal, kill, and destroy, like it says in John 10.10, but... Uh, um, I, I really just think what it was was that I didn't know Christ. I mean, because if I if I tried to look at it from a human perspective, I mean, I yeah, I mean, I guess I could try to find something that was wrong, but I was just depressed. I I, I felt like I didn't have a purpose. Well, and, let me share a story that might help you. Okay, <laughs> I too attempted suicide <clears throat> when I was a teenager, and we do these boot camps for the masculine journey, and mm-hmm. we're supposed to dig into these wounds to see. Because if you can identify the point of Satan's attack, it helps you understand what mm-hmm. God's glory is in you. Mm-hmm. Because Satan's been attacking your, your whole life mm. for what it is that actually he's afraid that you're going to become. That's right. And so we, I heard this from the stage, and then they were saying, so, you know, what's your wound? Well, I kept on getting horrible headaches. I couldn't even think. Yeah. And, you know, I, I went to bed, couldn't sleep it off. I finally got in the car, and the, they did this talk called the New Name Talk, and it was like, what does God call you? Mm-hmm. And so <clears throat> I uh, started going down the road, and I said, well, God, what do you call me? And he said, Robbie, I call you Faithful. And I was like, really? I don't have a cooler <laughs> name than Faithful? I mean, I'm like an old dog or something. You know, it's like, yeah. Robbie, we're, this is a really big name. This, is, this yeah. is like huge. Who's the guy that never cheated on his girlfriend, never you know, quit a job in his life? Who, who's the guy who's Faithful? And I said, well, let me think about this a minute because yeah. – if, if what I am is faithful, how would Satan attack faithful? What I didn't tell you is I couldn't remember why I attempted suicide. I thought about it for two days, and I couldn't remember why I had attempted suicide. It couldn't mm-hmm. come to my mind. Okay. But as soon as I asked Jesus the question of how would you attack faithful if you were Satan, he gave me the answer. It was betrayal. And immediately it came to my mind that, oh, yeah, now I remember. That's right. My... Best friend my was a point guard. I played basketball, as you might tell, by my height. Okay. And I was supposed to take my girlfriend out that night. And when I went up to her house, my best friend was there to take her out. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> and there you are, a 16-year-old boy, totally betrayed. And, oh, by the way, faithful is what you are. So Satan knew that, you know, that was the way to attack me. And when he did that, I looked at all these events in my life and all of a sudden they all lined up and I'm like, oh my gosh, he's been coming after that in me my whole life. And so I would actually challenge you (laughs) to to begin to look at what Satan, if not for God, because God's coming after he he obviously, I'm serious when I say this, Mike, I mean, it's been a real encouragement to be around you for the last three weeks since you came to me with this idea and to see your enthusiasm for the radio. And I'm thinking, Satan's been trying to stop this thing like a rolling train, like if not for God. Right. And so it's, it's, it's worth doing a little digging sometimes Yeah. (laughs) to, to figure out, Okay, because once I now have understood that I'm supposed to walk in being faithful, right? oh my goodness. I mean, it changes so much of my life almost every day mm. of understanding what it is that God actually did gift you to be able to do, but if not for God. So if not for that day, right, you wouldn't be married, you wouldn't I have wouldn't kids. I wouldn't have kids. Oh, yeah, I mean, uh, you know, and... and, and um, 
you know, what, what you just said, and maybe it's just being bold because I, you know, I've had people tell me, they said, Mike, I, you know, I want to tell people about Jesus, but I, I feel so silly or I feel so stupid. And I, I guess it's, it's once I found out about Jesus, once I met Jesus, I don't, I don't understand why you would be afraid to tell people about him. If, if you really believe everything that's true and you really believe the Bible and you really believe that uh, if you just believe in him, as it says in John three sixteen, that you'll have everlasting life, but that it, the same way, on, on the other hand, where it says in John three thirty six, is that if you don't believe in him, you will be condemned, that if, if you don't tell people about Jesus, <laughs> I mean, how, how selfish do you have to be? Um, and, and I, I do believe that there is a way to go about it. And, I, you know, I'm not saying you need to stand on the street corner every day for six hours and, uh, you know, you know, because who knows, you know, do people even listen to them, but there, there is a way to go about it. But I believe in some way, shape or form, um, I believe we have to evangelize and, and whether it's, you know, just going out and telling people or, you know, I think a big way that, that people evangelize and, and that's why I have Todd Harrison here today is, you know, you can evang- you can help with evangelism just by donating money and donating your time or whatever. I mean, it, you know, the radio, the ministry, it, it, it costs money. I mean, it's, it's not free. It's not free to be on the radio. It's not free to uh, go on mission trips. So um, I remember Pastor Chad Harvey out of Raleigh First Assembly one time, he said, he said, you have a choice. He says, you can either go yourself or you can give. Um, and so, there are several ways that you can help out with uh, the Great Commission, which is to go throughout the whole world and preach the gospel or, or tell the good news. But, um, you know, I, I think for for a lot of people, they may say, well, I just give money, but I'm not actually going over there doing all this stuff. And, and you know, I think a lot of the people who are going over there who may not have the money, who have to raise the money, they say, look, if you guys didn't donate the money for us to be able to go overseas or for us to be on the radio— we wouldn't be on the radio. So um, it's... Um, yeah, well, we have got to go to a break right this minute. Okay. But when we come back, okay. we're going to hear from Todd okay. and his story and how God has used him. If not for God, then what about Todd Harrison? We're going to find out more from Mike. Stay tuned. A lot more If Not For God coming up. If you're trying to sell your home and you're sick of your realtor telling you they can't get your price... Thank Todd Harrison. Call me. To sell your house for more money in less time and with no hassles, call 919-274-5532. Hi, this is Todd Harrison, and this is a great time to find out what your house is worth. Call me at 919-274-5532. Together, we can sell your house for more money in less time and with no hassles. The Todd Harrison team is affiliated with Keller Williams Realty. Well, welcome back to If Not For God. It's the Mike Zwick Show. We call him the Zwickipedia, so we're going to get to that in a minute. But not right now, <laughs> as promised, we have Todd Harrison, who, who's, again, you know, God kind of put it on your heart, Todd, to support Mike. And maybe you can share with our listeners what you saw in Mike that said, wow, I, I, I believe God's going to do something with this young man. Hey, Robbie. Hey, Mike. Great to be here with you today. Yeah, yeah. Um, I've known Mike for a little over a year now and just love his passion for the Lord. Um, So we just see that God really uh, shows up around Mike and in Mike, and we just really enjoy being around him and seeing God's vision kind of come out through Mike. And so he had talked a little bit earlier about evangelism, and I would say that Mike's one of those people that's really gifted in that area. Yeah, it's interesting to me that when he told his own story that somebody just said, hey, you need to know Jesus. <laughs> I mean, that, they didn't give you the five spiritual laws. Or, you know, there, was no, there was no real magic in that thing. It was just a simple statement that, mm-hmm. that actually impacted not just you, but you know, generations, because now you've got kids and all that stuff, if not for God. So you know, that's a very simple evangelistic me- you know, message that, that, that happened there. But interestingly, Todd, how I, I know our listeners would know to lo, love to know if you're in your own personal story, if not for God, what what happened with with Todd Harrison that you came to know Jesus? Yeah, great question, Robbie. Thanks. Um, so I would describe it this way: I was uh, the pastor was preaching one day on Ezekiel thirty-seven, and just a summary of that is it's the valley of dry bones, and um, 
kind of a my understanding of that is that you know it starts off with these bones and then muscles come and sinews and so one of the things that God was speaking to me about through that was you can put everything in life together um, you know even if you could do that if you could create muscle if you could create this but you couldn't make that live without me and so I just think about the same thing. So I love Mike's name for it. And uh, so that was really my testimony, uh, Robbie, is that God uh, knit my life together and then he breathed life into me. And so I tried to keep living that way. I think it's a great story of my life. And I see that a lot where God comes and, you know, we can, we can pull things together ourselves, but it's God who brings life to us within that and brings life into whatever we're doing. And so as a real estate agent, I know in your line of work, you know, you got people that are trying to sell their house. They're struggling. They can't get enough for it in order to make the, you know, pay off and all those those things. And so you have an opportunity really to bring the light of God into that dark situation. Yeah. For a lot of people, that's a dark area. Yeah, it, it has been and can be. And um, you'd be surprised about uh, the number of times we have helped people who haven't been able to sell previously or uh, who achieve a great sale when they thought they couldn't. And so uh, we uh, really believe that it's God who does things within it. And uh, we pray and we go to work and we trust the Lord. And it's amazing to see him show up in the business world and, and produce things that shouldn't happen. So it's, it's pretty cool. And I personally love people that incorporate their faith into their work. You know, because one thing to go to church on Sundays and, yeah. you know, that's all. But it, but part of the reason that we work is that in itself is an opportunity to serve God. Yeah. You know, that's it's right. an opportunity to to bring light, you know, to people in a, in a difficult situation. So I know, Mike, you're, you're thrilled to death to have such a sponsor on board. And I, uh, I, I am. And it's kind of a funny story. My middle my name is Michael Todswick. And, and so one day I was praying to the Lord and I said, God, I said, I've just had a couple of problems with some different real estate agents and this and that. And I said, Lord, help help me find a good real estate agent. And I just Googled it. And this guy's name came up, Todd. And I go, that's my middle name. I'm going to call this guy Todd. And uh, now we've been doing a business together for for over a year. And I, and I can just tell you, I mean, from, from using Todd as a real estate agent, he is very, very detail-oriented. And, you know, I've had other real estate agents who are just trying to, you know, Wham, bam, thank you, ma'am. Close the sale and be done with you. But but Todd really takes the time and 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 he really looks out for the other person's best interest. Um, you know, I, I think he he understands being in sales that if you know if you if you help enough other people get what they want, um, you know, God will help you get what you want. But he he really is a, a service oriented real estate agent, and he's a, he's a believer. And so, you know, I. I Matter of fact, I actually told my dad about him yesterday. I said, my dad wants to sell his home, and so now my dad is going to use him as well. So it's good to have somebody out there who's trustworthy like Todd. Um, and, uh, yeah, I mean, I you know consider him a friend as well. So. so I know our listeners are interested, and I'm personally very interested. You know, God gave you this vision to do this radio show, and then he uh-huh. gave you a name, if not for God. If not for God. So – how do you anticipate this coming to the listener weekly? Is it going to be guests that come on that talk about if not for God teaching? Kind of, how do you see that happening? Yeah, I mean, there'll definitely uh, be some of that, but you know, I, I feel like as as this moves forward, we just continue to pray and, and hear from the Lord, and uh, it it could be a lot of stories. Um, I've I've I guess probably in the last couple of years, I've met a lot of people who have seen just absolute miracles in their own lives. Um, you know, and, and I believe you had a show, was it two or three weeks ago, Robbie? And, and it was about, uh, you know, miracles that people saw. And, and you said there was, there was this lady I heard on the show who said that God picked her up in his hand and he showed her the whole world <laughs> and, uh, just stuff like that where, you know, <clears throat> that you realize that after a while that, um, I heard a preacher one time say this. He said, there was a time in our Christian walk with, where, where we believed in God or where we, you know, we thought that there was heaven and hell and stuff like that. He says, and then you get to a point where you know. Um, and I think, uh, I think a while ago, it, I, I really came to a point where I just knew. There, wasn't, there was no doubt. There was no questions or anything like that. Um, matter of fact, I think it's in the I'm trying to remember the book, but it says that that you may know that you have eternal life, and it doesn't say it's you. In be- First John, 
First John. So, which you know is another thing that's happened as a matter of if not for God, because I've heard from several people that know you, they say, "Man, Mike has a real hunger for the Scriptures," and, and that's an interesting thing that I find in disciples. Yeah, um, that. They just have this undesi- this unbelievable desire to to search the scriptures and 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 you have that. Yeah, I mean, I, I was actually talking with Todd about this on the way over this morning, and and one of the things that he told me about when he was in college was that he said he wanted to find God, and he said him and a friend of his just began reading the Bible, reading the Bible, and um, interestingly enough, I've I've you know studied this a little bit. I'm sure you have too, Robbie, but. I looked at one of the one of the top reasons that I've, I've that I've seen people come to Christ is just by reading the Bible, you know. And we always think that we have to have this cool way to bring people to Christ or this or that, but um, you know, it's it's the Word is alive. I mean, that you know, when people read the Word of God, it says it's it's sharp and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword, and. And it and it just it it just I remember just when I when I became a Christian just reading the Bible for hours and hours and hours, and, and I I talk to people nowadays and they're like oh I try to read the Bible but I don't but I don't have time for it or, or whatever and it's like man it's just you know you have time for I believe people people have time for what's important to them and so when I hear people say that I'm not reading the Bible or I, I don't have time to read the Bible, what they're really saying is, is it's just really not that important to me. Um, you know, they have time to watch Mari Povich or Jerry Springer. Uh, but. You know, <laughs> well, there's another answer too, I think. And, and I'm one of those people actually came to faith through reading the Bible. Yeah. And the way it happened to me is I wanted to sell more cars, if you know me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and so I, I picked up a power of positive thinking by Norman Vincent Peale. Well, the idea of selling more cars, not, you know, finding faith or anything, but right. he was genius because he knew that faith came by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Right. And so his first instruction when you took the course was you got to get up an hour early every morning and read the Bible. But before you read it, you got to pray and ask the Holy Spirit to give you, because most people, in my opinion, they try to read it. They say, I don't understand it. It requires the Holy Spirit, right? which by the way, the Holy Spirit comes even when you're not a believer, because I, he, he got me to understand the Bible. Mm-hmm. When I was clearly in no way did I understand the blood of Christ. So, but I did ask, God, if you're real, I need some help because this is really confusing. That's like, right. if you could explain to me how cutting a bunch of fat off a liver is going to help me sell more cars, I mean, I would love to. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know, what's, right. You know, it's just, but he, 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 he completely brought me to faith that exact way. That's right. A- and so, you know, what I see in common, certainly, and, and the thing that I love as Mike starts his show is this love for the Scriptures. And when you hear that, you know, he spent those hours and hours and hours, well, God's been feeding Mike, and now he's got some harvest that, that he's going to share through, if not for God. So, and I love the idea of stories, mm-hmm. because that's really kind of holy ground. It's where we hear, you know, how God moved in somebody else's life in their faith and, and, and often it triggers something, just like when he told the story about him coming to faith in the Bible, it immediately triggered my story, right? That's right. That's right. The, um, you know, and I, I think all three of us, Robbie and, and Todd, we've all been in sales, and, and there's, there's something that uh, I've heard people say that they say, facts tell, but stories sell. And um, so, you know, I, I believe it's, it's so many times that I, I remember I met a lady three or four years ago. We had a big Bible study with the Summit Church, which is where Todd attends. And um, uh, J.D. Greer uh, is the, the preacher over there, and he's actually the president of the Southern Baptist Convention. Uh, but one of the things that he would say is he said that, you know, when he was— <laughs> is that they they would say that when he was um, he was overseas one time, he said that there was a lady who was checking him into a hotel, and he said um, he said the lady she checked him in and, and this and that, and she said she put her her hand on his wrist or whatever, and she said, "Do you need anything else to hold tonight?" And he came back and he said, "Everything within me wanted to say yes." 
and he said, he ended up, he said no, of course, he said, but he said, in that moment after I said no, he said there was a big war or like a rebellion that had gone on in another country that he was a, a missionary in that time. And he said the same look of the devil that he saw in those people's faces when they were fighting against each other, he saw in that lady's eyes. And so I just, I always remember that because it was a story, first of all, and second of all, it was, it was something that had happened to him. Um, and I feel like we all have stories. And, and so maybe stories are just a way that people can relate to people. So, Yeah, well, it, 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 it's, it's exactly what you just described. That mm-hmm. By hearing somebody else's story, mm-hmm. you know, who knows that what you just told, just what you just told. Mm-hmm. Somebody's going to be checking in a hotel or something, and they're going to remember, <laughs> wow, that lady is trying to, you know, she could have that look. Watch out <laughs> for that lady. <laughs> <laughs> the adulterous woman. Yeah. Right. Well, there's the point. You know, everybody, you know, lives life. And, and so the courage, honestly, mm-hmm. to get on the radio and, and, and share intimate stuff like that mm-hmm. that's happening in your own life, mm-hmm. you know, is really a gift um, that, that God's given you. And, and so I know our listeners are excited to hear that again, the name of the show, If Not For God. If Not For God. And by the way, it was Psalm 124, not 127. <laughs> so that was the, uh, but yeah, it's, if you look at that whole, that whole uh, chapter in Psalm 124, it keeps repeating, if not for God, if not for God. And it was, it was just wonderful. Well, so. if not for God, Psalm 127 never would have happened either. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, there you go. Just saying, well, stay tuned. It's coming to 830 every Saturday morning. That's right. If not for God with Mike Swick. A virtual (laughs) Zwickipedia. Thanks for that. Thank you for listening to If Not For God with Mike Zwick. For more shows, subscribe on iTunes to If Not For God. For more information on Mike or to contact him, go to ifnotforgod.life.